Jack Elam appeared in over 73 movies and over 41 TV series. Even if you don't know his name, you'd recognize his face. He had a lopsided left eye that seemed to move on its own. It would go one way, while his right eye would go another. When accounting didn't work, he tried Hollywood. His physical features and natural talent made him perfect as a Western villain. It even made him fit in comedy films. Keep watching to learn how Jack Elam's eye became his unsettling trademark. Early life. William Scott Jack Elam was born November 13, 1920. The family lived in Miami, Arizona, while his father worked odd jobs to support them. In 1924, they moved to Globe. His mother Alice died at age 30 from general paralysis when he was only three years old. Jack and his sister Alice moved around to different families for a while. He remembers having to work to make extra money by gleaning cotton on nearby farms when he was only six. Their father got remarried in April of 1928, working at a loan company while his stepmother was a school teacher. When he was nine, he went to help his father, who, ironically enough, also had eye problems that made it difficult to fill out forms at night. This helped him gain early experience with business and accounting. I think I'd rather talk to her. Eye injury. Jack injured his left eye in a fight during a Boy Scout meeting in 1931. The other boy threw a pencil at him and it hit him directly in the eye. Doctors had to remove the lens, leaving him permanently blind. The damage also caused the eye to drift within the socket. He said that it did whatever it wanted and he couldn't control it. That created his signature cockeyed look. Changing it was possible but dangerous. He said in an interview with the Boston Globe in 1974 that he could have operated on it but didn't feel it was necessary because it was only a minor inconvenience. He also remembered a time when making Rawhide in 1951 when he mentioned getting surgery to Daryl Zanuck, head of 20th Century Fox. His boss told him never to fix it because it was part of his mystique. That proved to be some of the best career advice he ever got. Life before acting. Elam graduated from Phoenix Union High School and majored in business studies at Modesto and Santa Monica Junior Colleges in California. He worked a variety of odd jobs in his early years. In 1936, he allegedly lied about his age to work as an accountant for the Standard Oil Company. He was also an auditor for Samuel Goldwyn's studio and an office controller for Hopalong Cassidy Productions. Jack served two years in the Navy during World War II. He was exempt from service because of his eye injury, but worked as a civilian in Culver City. The hours of reviewing financial records put too much strain on his good eye. He had to have it operated on several times just to keep it open at all. The doctors eventually said there was nothing more they could do and he would go blind in that eye as well. He quit the business field in 1947 to save his vision. He knew he had to move on to another career path, and it was almost as if he stumbled onto the one the world knows him for today. Starting as a villain. Jack didn't dream of building an acting career, but it seemed like a viable alternative. His business skills were actually what helped make him a star. His friend was a movie director and was having trouble getting financing for three of his Western scripts. Jack promised to help out with the books in exchange for a major role in them. The first one was The Sundowners in 1950. He had a bit of extra help when other members of Hollywood noticed his talent. He was working on Raw Hyde and star Tyrone Power convinced the head of 20th Century Fox to sign him to a contract. That was the film that catapulted him to stardom and the one that cemented him as a villain. His character shoots a baby to make it dance and kills everybody except Tyrone Power and Susan Hayward. Before he knew it, Jack's mannerisms and trademark drooping eye were getting him cast all over. Doug Martin once wrote that, quote, his eyes conveyed villainy as surely as Durante's nose suggested humor. Jack even admitted that women have smacked him with their purses over what they'd seen him do on screen. He guest starred in the most popular westerns of the 50s and 60s, including The Lone Ranger, Gunsmoke, and over 20 episodes of Bonanza. He even appeared in an episode of the hit sci-fi show The Twilight Zone in 1961 called Will the Real Martian Please Stand Up? He also appeared in Death Valley Days that year and in the episode Clutie Hutter on the show Lawman in 1962. By the end of the 1950s, the news and moviegoers nicknamed him, quote, the screen's most loathsome character. Roles as heroes or comedic characters didn't come often, but that began to change. Moving to comedy. 
Jack's lazy eye may have suggested villainy, but he eventually became such a beloved actor that showrunners began to consider him for other roles. And that worked thanks to Jack's wide acting range. He made audiences laugh as much as he had made them want to hit him with their purses. One of his first official comedic roles was Support Your Local Sheriff in 1969. The follow-up, Support Your Local Gunfighter, ended up being one of his favorite projects. He began to switch from being cast as the villain to gaining comedic roles after that. Burt Kennedy directed him in 15 films and TV shows and saw his comedic potential. He appeared on TV shows like Rio Lobo and the short-run show The Texas Wheelers. He also continued to get comedic film roles, such as in 1981's The Cannonball Run and the sequel three years later. He developed a bond with 11-year-old Mickey Hayes who had progeria, a genetic disorder that causes rapid aging, while filming The Aurora Encounter in 1986. A documentary called I Am Not a Freak was filmed about it in 1987. He said himself, quote, I've met a lot of people, but I've never met anybody that got to me like Mickey. His final appearance was in 1995 in Bonanza Under Fire. By that time, he'd reached 119 films and 260 TV appearances. Love of Gambling Jack Elam isn't only associated with villains or comedians. He's also been a key part of hundreds of westerns. He's a classic cowboy, and what does a cowboy love more than a game of cards? True to that nature, Jack Elam loved poker, especially liar's poker. He even had the right to a few games of cards written right into his contract with Warner Brothers. His friends have many fond memories of spending their leisure time playing with him. He never had much of a poker face. His friends say his smile and eyes were too bright to hide anything. That didn't mean he failed to take everyone on the set's money away. His co-stars would always save a bit to play with him, but they rarely got to keep it. They also made side bets about things like the weather. Love Life and Family Acting in poker may have been Jack's primary loves, but he also managed to find a family. He was married twice and had a beloved family he always took care of. He met Jean Louise Hodge when he was at Santa Monica Junior College. They were married in 1937 and had two children together, a daughter named Jerry and a son named Scott. They stayed together until she died of colon cancer on January 24, 1961. He married Margaret Jennison in 1961 and they had a daughter named Jacqueline. They stayed together for 42 years until his death. Losing the Cockeyed Cowboy Jack Elam died of congestive heart failure at age 82 in 2003. He survived by his wife Jenny and his children. He once allegedly said that all he wanted on his tombstone was, quote, I drank scotch and played poker. He was inducted into the Hall of Great Western Performers in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma in 1994. His close friend, Will Hutchins, considered him more like family and said his acting was full of humanity. His friend, Al Hassan, called him cantankerous in a great way and said he lived one of the best lives I've ever seen. That wonderful life also included plenty of business sense. His net worth was valued at $2 million when he died. Now it's time to hear from you. Do you remember Jack Elam? What's your favorite role of his? Let us know in the comments section below.